Four months after Ukrainian forces launched their long-anticipated counteroffensive in southern and eastern Ukraine, Russian forces tried to shift the war's momentum back in their favor. On October 10, the Russian 2nd Combined Arms Army and attached forces from the separatist Donetsk People's Republic, altogether amounting to at least three brigades, each with a couple of thousand troops, attacked around Avdivka, a Ukrainian stronghold just northwest of Donetsk, in eastern Ukraine's Donbass region. They rolled directly into well-prepared kill zones north and south of Avdivka. For two weeks straight, the Russians have mounted attack after attack. For two weeks straight, Ukrainian mines, drones and artillery have blasted the assault columns into oblivion. Russian losses now exceed a hundred armored vehicles along with hundreds, potentially thousands, of dead and injured men. The intensity of the losses, that is, vehicle write-offs and human casualties per day, divided by area, now matches what the Russians experienced during the failed crossing of the Siversky Donetsk River in May 2022 and the attempted assault on the Ukrainian garrison in Vuladar six months later. Within the span of a week and a half, Russia suffered the loss of approximately a brigade-sized force, Ukrainian analysis team Frontelligence Insight reported. That's as much as a third of the people and equipment the second CAA initially committed to the assault. The Ukrainian garrison, by contrast, has lost just a few vehicles, but losses among Ukrainian infantry might be relatively heavier. Ukrainian filmmaker turned soldier Oleg Sentsov described one close fight. The orcs were pushing wave after wave of infantry and armored groups, which were largely destroyed by our artillery drones and a tank. We got lucky, Stentsov added. We got lucky many times that day. Including when we escaped that encirclement under cover of two, M2, Bradleys that came for us. But not everyone who took part in this operation was so fortunate. The Avdivka operation has become a debacle for the Russians, but not for a paucity of resources. Yes, the second CAA has committed more than a few do-it-yourself infantry fighting vehicles, experimental armored personnel carriers as well as museum vintage APCs the Kremlin pulled out of long-term storage. But the bulk of the assault equipment is modern. T-80 tanks, BMP-2 IFVs and BTR-82 APCs. And the Russians enjoy significant close air support. Conflict intelligence team. An independent analysis group noted airstrikes on purported Ukrainian positions in Avdivka by Russian warplanes lobbing universal gliding and correction module guided bombs. These powerful glide bombs, some weighing more than 3,000 pounds, might not be as elegant and accurate as Ukraine's own, smaller glide bombs are. But with their heavier explosive fill, they are one of the biggest fears among Ukrainian troops according to Ukrainian soldier Oleksandr Solenko.